Hey guys, today we tie a pipe tube and we tie this pipe tube here. Not exactly the same because I'm lacking the flash material, but I'm uh, just going to tie this one because this color combination, this tube, we fished recently a lot the last weeks and uh, was quite successful for big pipes. And we're putting it on a pipe rig like that. This one I've tied already for that tube in an earlier time, but I'm just talking you through it. So for the pipe rig, we're using um, a big mouse hook, Valuvas 6.0. And as thread, I'm using, as always, my uh, 200 GSP Vivas thread. And we just start to wrap it gently and um, then we see what we do with the stinger. We do have um, to make the connection of, uh, of it with a wire just uh, so the pike teeth won't be able to cut out. Got plenty of wire here. This is uh, titanium wire. Um, I choose the lengths um, regarding to the length of my nyad, so the stinger is really in the rear of the fly. So we go with both sides through the hook eye and fold the loop just above the stinger and pull it tight. And if you want to pull it even a bit tighter, you can just grab the titanium, hook it in your vise and just give it a pull. So it's really close to the hook out. A bead on it, and a second bead. Like that. So we have several possibilities. We can put the hook upwards, we can put it sidewards in a 45 degree angle, or we can put it downwards. It's just different possibilities of hook setting. Um, I usually don't like it to put it downwards because then I have two hooks pointing in the same direction. If I put it upwards, the chance is higher to set a hook when the pike is grabbing it just because you have two hooks pointing in different direction, of course. Um, most people, I think, fish it in a 45 degree angle. Um, I don't like that when I fish tubes, especially when I fish tubes like that, which have a belly and a, and, and a head and, and a form which they have to swim in, um, because it is unbalancing the uh, weight of the fly, so I mostly tie it in straight upwards. And usually it's best to use thick wire material, which is a bit stiffer. This one is even a little bit too thin because the hook is just bending down and then it's getting out of balance again. So I like to have it straight upwards like that and just tie it in. And to keep it a little bit upwards, I like to have a few thread wraps underneath the wire to keep it in a kind of straight position with the hook. So just give it a few wraps underneath. So what we do now is we uh, get one of these small tail connectors and uh, our titanium wire and just go through it like that. Fold the two pieces together. Take a bead. Like that. And if you grab now the end of the wire with the pliers, like that, and you pull the bead, it will bend the titanium a little bit and stays in place. Um, and it doesn't bend it too far so it won't break. So what we do then is we just tie it in. We don't have to fold it back here. Just give it some knot. It doesn't really matter which knot you put on it. Because then you can take some super glue, go with some super glue on top of it, and then the uh, system is finished. The only thing which you have to do now is you um, have to get some some pike wire and attach it to it, and um, it's just easier to, to, to have that already on um, when you have the systems to change. So you just do it like that. You go with the pike wire through it. This is the Petridge pipe wire, and then you melt it with a lighter 
I can see if we can do that later. Um, and then you do the same thing on the other side with the loop and the loop you can push through the tube. So we set that aside for drying. So the glue won't be everywhere. And then we tie the actual tube and there we have to uh, look out for the kind of tube you're using. So we're having different tubes. We have hard ones which you can't really bend and we have uh, these soft ones. And if I'm tying these soft tubes, I can just place the tube above the hook eye like that. And then I can orientate the hook in my fly which is the most important thing for a tube fly because with this setting you can actually say how the fly is swimming. So this is my little tube device. Um, it works just with, with an eye screw like uh, this one here. So you screw it up and you can put the tube through it like that. And then you tighten the screw if you want to and it's and it's locked but what you have to do is you have to put a metal pin in i lost mine so i'm just combining these two of my uh, stone foam and then you can just you know, as i said just place the tube in between and then just close it and what it does it is not pulling out at all so if i want i can squeeze it really tight i can pull as hard as I want, it will never ever come loose. Just shorten the tube a bit. Uh, what it does as well, because I can't start tying beyond this point, um, therefore I always have enough space left where I actually can place my hook in, so you never forget about some extra space for your hook eye, which is uh, quite important as well, because otherwise you can't cure your, your tube fly. So we just do a few base wraps on the tube, like that, and then we grab uh, some white bucktail. Here's uh, my uh, last pieces, let's see if it works, it's uh, not the one I would have preferred for this fly, but we have to use it now anyway. just give it a counterclockwise spin so the thread is lying backwards to your fingers giving it a few loose wraps one two three and then we work it with the thumb around the uh, tube you can check if it's around is it you can see it's around the tube and then we can just pull it so it raises up a bit So this is the volume we need where we can lay our material against. Um, so we continue now with some nylon and we use a little bit of uh, flashable or something flashy. Um, usually I like to use some pearly flesh in it when I tie this white. Just don't know. Um, here those is the Polar flesh. I just found it in my box. I like uh, that when they are having bands inside and then they have all these different reflections uh, within one string. I think it's even more fleshy than the uh, holographic ones, and I just like it. So, um, but what we do first is we're using some uh, white Nyad here. So, Nyad is Snow Runner. Um, this is just a big piece and it's not uh, pre-brushed, so we just brush it out. Um, if you buy an iod or if you have an iod and your hair is a little bit curly, like that one, you can just iron it with um, yeah, just iron it with a uh, hot steam. Just watch out; the uh, darker colors have a tendency to give the color away. So uh, just put an old uh, towel in between and then you'll be fine to go. 
So what do we do now is we tie in a Bonoid against the uh, against the bucktail. Usually I tie the tail in uh, uh, not hollow tied in, but uh, on tubes I prefer to tie it in hollow tied just because I can tie it in, I have my hands free and I can now work it around the hook and make sure uh, around the tube and make sure that it's actually everywhere and covering the whole area. So just fold it back, go around it like that. Just a few tight wraps and just make a few thread wraps in front of it just to secure it. Just using a little bit of a uh, super glue. And then we just put some flesh in. I don't know why, but for, for tubes I just use more flesh than I use in streamers. It's, it, it's not making any sense, but it's just because you have no angle in the beginning where to tie to it, just tie it all the way around, always, and then check for the nicest uh, position of uh, the tummy and the, the belly. So I just tie it in so it uh, exceeds with the longest hair of the um, of the naiad. And then I fold it back like that. And tie it down and I do the same on the belly side. A few thread wraps like that. That's fine. And what I do now is uh, I put another bit of bucktail in on the top bit. And um, so now it decides where the uh, the uh, belly of my tube is because I want the back always to be a bit higher. I only tie it in on, on the top, which becomes then the back later on. Um, so just grab a bunch of bucktail, not tying it in reverse, just tie it in. Just work it on the top half of the of the tube like that. And then just Pull it up, and then it will raise up and gives a little bit of support to the next section of a uh, of um, naiad and flashable and all this stuff. So that's the way. And now we get a little bit different colors in as well. So we take these. Uh, I think it's bait fish gray. Really love it. And uh, only tying this because this color combination I've now fished for the last two three weeks, and we catch a lot of big pikes on it. Well, the other didn't catch any, so it's just good working at the moment. Probably I would say with a pike the color doesn't really matter. Maybe it matters if the fly is light or dark, but. You know, never change a winning team, and this one definitely worked the, uh, the last day, so this is a little bit too much. Maybe a little bit more of the under fur out, otherwise it will be too bulky. Perfect. We don't want to have a floater. Tie it in like that, just on top. the same on the belly but the belly will become a little bit orange so we just grab a little bit of orange naiad pull the tips out so it's not too long because it's the belly section the tips goes away tape it a little bit take a little bit of the under fur out not too much because I like to keep the under fur from the naiad for the belly section because it's giving a round and fat belly and that's always good I think Just tie it in. And what we do now, we fold that back, press it flat with the thumb so it's going around the uh, half of the tube.
and the same one on the top. Tight wraps like that, and then we can brush it out a bit. You can see how much volume this fly suddenly gets just through a bit of mired and bucktail. And this will definitely work well for bikes. So, what we do now is we do um, a quick dubbing loop. Just uh, make it hold. Get your dubbing twister. I'll just try to uh, do it in this direction so you see it. And now I put some uh, flesh in between. This time I use the, uh, I think it's H2O Pro. Like that. Now put it into our dubbing loop. I think you might not be able to see that. I tried to pull it up a bit, but because I didn't use any wax and stuff like that, it might just slide off if I pull it up. But okay, so just put it in like that. And as I said, it's just sliding to the side. Just give it a quick. So we just rounded the dubbing loop around my. Uh, fly and what we do now of course is we uh, catch the thread again so we're protecting our dubbing loop and what I do then is just do it a few times again and then I cut the thread and I wind on top of uh, a little bit on top of it again so it's all super tight and secure and that looks like that similar to the other one and what we do now is just the head section so um, for that we use uh, the monster duck grey on top lava on the bottom or on the belly as always don't use too much of it um, if you use too much of fine hair materials Flies have a tendency to swim. Always check if your windings in front of the monster duck are covered. And I grab the orange. I like to cut the edges of my back so I can just pull it out. Uh, Just align the fibers. Tie it down. Use a little bit more of the grain, not much, just a bit. Taking a zipper gap, put the brush on, and brush a little bit of the zipper gap onto the fly. Oh, not onto the fly, onto the thread, and then just wind the thread with the wet glue around it and make another knot into the wet glue, and it will last forever. So, cut that, brush everything back, like that. kind of have a finished fly now is the time where you open the uh, tube device again take the fly out you see I didn't have a problem with the uh, with a spinning fly on, on, on the tube if you put a tube onto your tube needle especially if you tie pipe streamers and you put on a lot of pressure or you apply a lot of pressure onto the uh, thread they have the tendency on these uh, needles to spin around and then loosen and then you can't just tie it, tie it anymore 
one, two, and so this is the belly of our tube, side, back, and now we put some ice on in red. Just give me a second. Here we are again, so we put some of uh, the ice on and we uh, take rip the eyes when we do them on. <coughs> so here we are again, we have to put some ice onto the fly and we're just taking my tube now, put it the other way around into my tube device, I can tighten it a bit if I want, I can do some rebrushing just move it a little bit further to the side so it's better to see. It's now bending a little bit in because there's only one needle which is a bit too small but that doesn't matter because we don't tie it. And we take our E6000, this one here, which is just the uh, best glue to um, tie an eye some pipe flies I think. Take a little bit on the dobbing needle Apply the eye like that and move the needle out. If you do it, you can do it in every direction, but I found out that if you do it, the best way is it to put the eye on and go with the fibrous direction back out of the head section. So you don't move the fibers in the fly around. And your needle, you can just clean on the back of your nail pelt, and then it's fine again. So the fly is finished, like that. You take one of the uh, eye tools, as you know from the last movie. So now you see, uh, I hope you see, there's our tube within all this white. And we can just get the hook then inside. We just have to re grab it. Second cell. This is our tube. And we can just pull the hook inside. And you can see it's stuck in the tube. The hook is on the belly side, so the fly is keeled downwards. If I remove the eye tool now. Like that, we have a perfectly finished tube fly, and uh, now you only have to put the pipe wire into the uh, into the hook, and then you can fish it. Only thing which needs to be done now: cut the tube. Like that. Half a centimeter you can leave, or even less, depends on how you want to do it. Take your lighter, just melt it. Like that. Always be careful with your material. So I'm done. The tube fly is finished. <laughs>